A well-organized Google Ads account can help advertisers save time to make it easier to find the data that they need to optimize their account. And Google Ads labels are a big factor in keeping your account organized. These are custom created in each account, and they can be applied to a variety of levels, which we will cover in this video. We will then show you how to manage your custom labels, some strategies that we like to use with custom labels, how to use labels for filtering so you can find the data that you need to optimize your campaigns, and then we will go over how to use labels for automated rules. So let's get started. In Google Ads, custom labels can be applied to four levels within your account. We're already on the first level. That will be campaign level labels. You can also apply labels to specific ad groups. Third, you can apply labels to ads, not assets, just the ads. And then finally, you can add labels to search keywords. Now that you know the levels, let's look at how we can apply labels as well as the few ways that we can create new labels. Let's say I wanted to group a certain theme of campaigns together. For instance, the two Halloween campaigns we see on the screen right now. I can quickly go up and select the two campaigns and you should see the blue bar come up on your screen and the same thing should appear no matter which level you're clicking on. There we see label. I'm gonna click on this dropdown. I can choose one of the labels I already have created but most likely you're here because you're new to labels. So if you wanna create a new one, it says it right there, create labels. Go ahead and name your new label. And then if you're more concerned about the visual appeal to help it stick in your head a little bit better, you can click on the color circle and choose a different color option here. It's Halloween, so I'm gonna choose orange. Description is optional, so I'm going to create the new label. And there, it is already selected. And then we will need to apply it to these two campaigns. So the label has been applied but we can't see it right now because I don't have the proper columns. So let me X out of the blue bar and then click on your column settings to adjust the column. Then you can go down to modify your columns. I'm not gonna tell you what other columns you need to add to this view. It's gonna be depending on what you wanna see for whatever campaign goals you have. But just go and click on the magnifying glass. Of course, labels there, because I've used it recently, but it's easy enough for you to search it if you're not seeing it from the dropdown right away. Click and add my label. And then just to make it easier, I'm gonna bring it to the top, close enough. If you wanna save this view for later, you can always save this specific set, but for now, I'm just going to apply. So there we see the label column showcasing our labels for the two campaigns we have selected. So this is a very basic scenario and one I typically don't use. So I included this example for this reason. I try not to use labels that already mimic filtering functionality available within Google Ads. Let me explain. In this label example, I created the label based upon the naming convention. It makes sense that you would wanna group all of these Halloween campaigns together, but we can already go up to the search function, type in Halloween, and then filter campaigns by the naming convention. Once we do that, we're already filtering by this specific label. So how else do we typically like to use labels within Google Ads? I'll hop into a few different accounts to talk over some of those scenarios. And while doing that, we'll walk through how to filter by each of these labels. This account is running a variety of campaign types, and we can see that they are already using labels. The two labels that we see are for their annual summit. So they're limited run campaigns, and we do label those so it's easier for us to see. And even though I cannot show you the campaign names, not all of their summit campaigns have summit in the campaign name. So this is one way that we can group these together to see how these campaigns perform every year. But they also have different campaign groupings that they run limited times throughout the year. This particular client holds regional events in different cities around the country, and sometimes they like to promote these events. And they are another set of campaigns that don't use similar naming conventions where we would just search for the campaign name. So we have labeled all of these campaigns. So to find them, we can add a filter to this current view, and we need to tell Google that we want to filter by a specific label. Well, I have to blur out everything because it mentions the client account and the ID number. I'm gonna scroll down to this specific one all of their regional campaigns. Click apply, and since nothing was running within the past month, there aren't any stats to show. So the main naming convention of the campaign just shows what campaign type it is, some branding element, and then most of them have the city name. But they do share some of the naming conventions with our other display campaigns. So at the end of the year, we go back and see which event campaigns perform the best. Are there changes that we need to make? Are there certain locations that perform better and we need to hold more events within those cities? So pretty much we're grouping these campaigns by the goals that we want to achieve with running these localized display campaigns. Let's look at another way we can use custom labels within Google Ads. 
But one of the main ways that we use custom labels is for ad testing. And there are a variety of ways that we use labels for our ads. One example is what we're looking on the screen right now is to label how we're creating our responsive search ads. Michelle already created a video about responsive search ad strategies and templates. You can watch that video here, but we're essentially we're taking those tactics from that video and using it within this particular account. We're testing out different themes while we're pinning certain headline placements within our responsive search ads for this particular client. So if I highlight a particular label in pretty much all of these ads, we have keyword variations pinned to headline one. So I don't need to call out what I want for my first headline within these labels. I already know that but I need to remind myself what themes we're running in the ads for headlines two and three. So the ad in the second row has, of course, the keyword headlines pinned to headline one spots, but we're testing out for headline two, a variety of headlines that are testing different call to action statements. And then all of our pin headlines for headline three are a variety of value messages. If I filter by that specific label, I can see how it performs. Now the ad in the top row, these variants were created after these labeled ads. Because what we found out is that a lot of general consumers for this B2B account were coming in and they were looking for a specific type of persona to click on our ads, even though they may search for some higher level generic keywords. So we're still using keyword focused headline ones, but in our second test, we added pre-qualifying messages pinned to headline two, purposely trying to scare people away. We wanna focus on getting the right user to our website, not as many users as possible. And then we still kept the value message headlines pinned to the third spot. So if I click off of that, I would be able to then look at the stats to see which ad message is performing the best. Now there's a variety of ways to assess this depending on what type of company you are. Yes, we look at the basic stats that we see there in terms of conversions and everything, but there's other stuff that we have to keep in mind. When I'm pre-qualifying users, I expect a lower click-through rate because I'm scaring people away. But we have our URL tracking updated to label what type of ads are performing. So when we go back in the CRM and see, do these conversions actually become customers, which ad message is going to perform better? So we can always filter by label to see the stats within here. You can also download your report. It will include the label column. And if you like to look at pivot tables to make it easier to compare the stats between the two different types of labels, that is also an option. Just make sure you have the label column included when you download the report, and then you'll be able to filter your Excel by the label. I'm not gonna change views, but another way that we use labels for ad testing, depending on what the client wants to see, would be creating for labels of when we launched a new set of ads. Essentially, the label will have some sort of ad convention name, as well as the date of when the ads went live. We do this because we understand sometimes ads need a longer time to run. And this helps us remember when these particular ads were implemented so we don't shut them down too soon if we feel that they don't have enough metrics to really make an accurate decision if the ad is working or not. If we're testing out landing pages and the ad copy between a few sets of ads is exactly the same and the only thing that you're testing is a different landing page, we will call out the particular landing page in a label. There are landing page views and reports that you can look between an account, but sometimes it's just easier and quicker to just filter by a specific landing page label. Now, another option that this account isn't using that I have used in the past has been on the keyword side. Don't have clients right now that are using these examples, but in previous e-com accounts that we've managed, we have labeled specific product keywords if they were some of the top performers for the company. Labeled all the keywords related to products that were driving the most dollars, driving the most overall sales, maybe had the highest level margin, so you're making the most money. On the B2B side, we have labeled keywords that typically give the most lifetime value. We have labeled keywords by the persona that they have internally that they wanna to try to reach to see if we are bringing in the right user eventually. And then we've had certain clients that wanted to label their top 25, top 10 best performing keywords. And that's depending on the client, whether their goals was most conversions, most impressions, driving the most traffic to the site, they all had different goals. And that's where labels can really help out because if you have a lot of keyword variety in the account and they all meet certain goals, it's harder to filter just by the content and what you have within the keywords. Sometimes it's easier just to group them all within a particular label so you don't have to search for a bunch of different things and check a bunch of boxes. You can just add a filter by a particular label. If you ever need to make changes to your labels, let's say you're sick of seeing the same color over and over again, or you found that you had a misspelling in what you called one of your labels, it's very easy to change. I find it easier to go back to your campaigns view, click on one of the options that'll bring up the blue bar again. So when you select label, 
the options will come up here. Just highlight over the label that you want to edit. You don't necessarily have to click on it. Just highlight over so you see the edit pencil button. If you click on it, there you can edit the name. Again, change the color if that's the edit you want to make. You would save the changes and then the edit is changed, but I didn't apply it to the actual campaign. You would still need to go back, select all the campaigns, ad groups, ads, keywords, whatever, and make sure that you apply it if you're trying to add it after you edit it. You may have noticed, if we go back up, we'll edit the same pin. While you're editing, you see the trash logo. This is how you can delete a label. If you realize that you have a label in there that you have either never used, haven't used in a long time, probably will never use again. I just go back and delete certain labels just because the more you add here, the more you have to scroll and find if you don't want to search for it. But if I bring up Google Ads Editor, I want to show you that you can create, edit, and remove labels from Google Ads Editor too if you prefer to work in this platform. So make sure that you click on the account level dropdown under shared library, scroll down a little bit, and you will find a labels option. You can add a new label here, add all the information. A benefit about using Google Ads Editor is that you get a lot more color options. You can add in specific color codes. And you remember when we were creating the Halloween label in the very beginning of this video, it only gave me a few options. So create your custom colors here. You also get more information on how many campaigns, ad groups, ads, and keywords are using these particular labels. So if you find out that you have labels created and they're not attributed to anything, could be a good option to just easily highlight them and then delete them from the system. But go ahead, make all your label changes with an editor from the shared library. Don't forget to post any of your changes so they show up within the desktop interface, but it's another easy way to create and manage your labels. In the intro, I did mention I was gonna show you how you can use labels within your automated rules. So I'm back within the account that has the annual summit. And while all the summit ads are paused for the year, we know the summit's gonna happen again next year in 2024. So when the time comes, when I have my updated ad copy set, my targeting options are going to stay the same. I can proactively create an automated rule to launch these campaigns on a particular date. So to do that, let's go to tools and settings and let's create a rule. To create a new rule, click on the blue plus button and there's a variety of different rules that you can create. We already have a video going over automated rules. You can check that one out here. But when we're talking about using labels for rules, pretty much know we're tied to these top four. A campaign rule, ad group rule, keyword rule, ad rule, depending on where you have your label set up. In this case, we're gonna to stick to campaign. First, I'm going to name my rule, and then I wanna choose the specific conditions. So if I click on the filter, I can search for the label, and I will choose the label. And I scroll down, I will select the summit option, where I, we have all of our paused summit ads labeled, and then I will choose what happens. I want to enable the campaigns, but you can see there are a variety of other actions that we can do. Change budgets, change a label, if you wanna pause labeled campaigns on a certain date, you can do that, but I want to enable the campaigns. Change the name of the action up above, scrolling down. This is going to be a one-time thing, but depending on your case, you may need to consistently pause or unpause certain campaigns. It's a whole nother thing that you'll need to set up, but we're just bringing these campaigns back once a year. Then I will just choose the date and time. Don't really care about the time, this is just an example. If you wanna email anyone for any updates or changes or errors, add the email recipient here. And then it's being weird right now. This should be our save apply button. It's completely blued out, but I'm going to save this rule. I know there's a lot blurred out here, but I created the rule saying enable all of the campaigns that contain the label summit on January 1st, 2024 at 11 a.m. Then I can always go back, edit the rule if I need to, if the date changes, and just think of all the ways that you can have other rules. If you found out that you had a set of ads that you labeled with a specific label and they all need to be paused or enabled at a certain time, it's easy enough just to use the filter when you're creating the rule to just have your automated rules apply to certain subsets and labels. I know I only gave some examples of how we use labels, but I'm pretty sure you can think of how you can use them better within your account to either stay more organized or make it easier to find the information you need to make better decisions within your Google Ads account. If you have any strategies that you would like to share on how you like to use labels that I didn't talk about today, let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button. 